candidates, all the hard work in Iowa comes down tonight to organizations who's got enough might to win over the voters. We want to bring in our reporters embedded with the four candidates who are in a statistic. is with the Kerry campaign. They join us in the live line from Iowa. Felix Schein following the Dean campaign and Priya David with the Gephardt campaign. They join us live from Des Moines. Dougal, let me begin with you. This news of kind of a mutual aid pact uh, between Senator Edwards and Representative Kucinich. Exactly what kind of deal did they strike? Well, it's kind of a two-way street. It's a reciprocal agreement between Edwards and Kucinich. And it's based on the fact that in every precinct, before your votes count, you have to have at least 15% of the vote. So if you didn't have 15%, then either your votes are lost or you can vote for someone else. Now, yesterday, the Edwards camp instructed their precinct captains that in any precinct where they have less than 15%, they should recommend to their supporters that they vote for Kucinich. And the same was done by the Kucinich campaign. Now, of course, voters are going to vote for who they want, regardless of instructions. It's kind of more like a mutual endorsement. And it's kind of surprising when you look at uh, where the two of them stand, of whether they have all that much in, po in common as far as, uh, you know, on the war and other things. But uh, maybe uh, on a personal level, they like each other. In the meantime, Lester uh, Edwards has been out here campaigning still today, uh, working with a bit of momentum in the polls. But still, the question is whether he can compete with that uh, get-out-the-vote manpower that Dean and Gephardt have. All right, Dougal, thanks. Let me turn to Becky. And, Becky, uh, Senator Curry was on the Today Show, and his voice was barely holding up then. I understand he's pretty much lost it now. He has, Lester. He actually pulled out of three of his four events today, sending surrogates to campaign in his place. He's nursing his voice. He's actually going to be heading to an event any minute now, and hopefully he'll, he'll have regained his ability to speak. But he is hoping, no matter how, how good his voice is, that voters' voices will be heard tonight at the caucus. But his campaign is really trying to manage expectations. That's the lead of the day. They don't want to be termed the front runner. They're afraid that if they come in second or th actually if they say come in third that it won't be viewed as a win and they are trying to manage expectations saying it's all about organization and saying that the campaigns of congressman dick Gephardt and governor howard dean are outstanding compared to their own all right becky thanks very much let me turn to felix you've been traveling with governor dean this race for him has become a lot more competitive in recent weeks as we've seen in that tight uh, pack of the, t of the top four in the polls there what's his mood right now in terms and and what might strategy is he calling on his folks to employ tonight at the caucuses? Well, those are the two big questions being asked by everyone, Lester. From what I can tell, at least this morning, Governor Dean remained upbeat. He has been for a number of days now. He's been much more available to the press, laughing regularly, saying that he's going to win. He's doing none of the expectations game that Kerry, uh, Senator Kerry is doing that Becky just referred to. He said he's going to win here. He intends to win here. Uh, he actually joked about trying to spin a result. And last night, for the first time, he had his wife on the trail. Uh, Judy Dean flew out from Vermont for the first time. We hadn't seen her in about seven months. Uh, she gave a very short speech, much to the, uh, to the amusement and to the applause of the crowd. They really enjoyed it. They laughed. They had a good time. And Governor Dean and, uh, and his wife shared a nice little kiss. They held hands. It was a moment we haven't seen from Governor Dean at all, who's usually very fiery, uh, very much in the zone. It was a, a typical, or rather I should say an untypical moment for them. Uh, today, however, he's getting a little more nervous. As the clock ticks down, you can certainly see that the, uh, the pulse rate is up. Uh, the campaign is a little bit more nervous about what will happen. It's a big uh, sort of who knows here. Everyone is uh, wondering what might happen, whether these organizations will in fact turn out the vote. In but fact, as Beck, you said, in, go ahead. And in fact, Felix, there have been high, extremely high expectations for Dean because the way he was polling so early in this race. Are they beginning to spin, rationalize, dealing with what, what happens if he comes in second, third place? Can they put a positive spin on that? They aren't. Oddly, the campaign is saying they're going to win, while the analysts are saying they would probably be all right if they come in second or third. We have to remember that Governor Dean has a strong base of support in New Hampshire. He continues to lead in the polls there. There's an untested quantity there in General Wesley Clark, who's running second now. He has a big organization in a lot of those February 3rd states, and he has money, a big Internet machine which keeps pouring money into the, uh, to the campaign. And those two things are key. If you can buy yourself out of some trouble in Iowa, and I have to say that historically the person who wins Iowa doesn't necessarily win in New Hampshire and perhaps doesn't even go on to win the nomination. Uh, as you heard David Yepsen say in that Today Show package. And, and you mentioned money. Let me turn to Priya. On the subject of money, a lot of speculation about the Gephardt campaign. What happens if he doesn't win there? What is their strategy and what is their confidence level at this hour? The Gephardt campaign goes on to say that they are going to win here, Lester, because it's what they've been saying from the beginning. And the Gephardt campaign knows that this state is crucial to them. They're stopping just shy of saying that they